In this tutorial we're going to use the part design workbench to model a twisted vase. So I'll start off by creating a new file and saving it. I'll then select the part design workbench. Create a body and create a first sketch. So I'm going to model in plan view on the XY plane, select OK. So for the sketch, I'd like to create a triangle. I'm going to do that by selecting the polyline tool, picking three points that roughly shape out an equilateral triangle, and then press escape to close the polyline tool. So with the rough shape of the triangle drawn, I'm now going to draw a circle to use as a construction aid. So this is the same as normal geometry, but it's not used in the 3D model anywhere. So to convert um, a shape to a construction aid, I'm going to select this circle and select the construction geometry. So that's now changed blue. I'm now going to use the construction geometry to constrain the triangle to by selecting the node on the triangle holding control, selecting the circle, and choosing the fix on object constraint. I'm going to do that for the, each of the nodes in the triangle. Now we can see the triangle is constrained to the circle. Uh, so we, we need to set a rotation reference, so we can do that by selecting this bottom edge and setting a horizontal constraint. And then we can keep the, the triangle as an equilateral triangle by selecting all three edges and setting an equality constraint. So the only thing left to constrain now, the one degree of freedom that we have remaining, is the size of the circle. So we'll set the radius to 30 millimetres. Okay, so that's all done. We'll exit the sketch by clicking close. So I'm going to save the file at this point and fit the view. This time, rather than using the pad tool to create 3D geometry, we're going to use the loft tool. And the loft tool requires a series of sketches through which the loft can be created. So to create them, I'm going to switch the model tab, turn on the origin and expand the tree. Um, probably easier to see this in the isometric view. And then using the XY plane, I'm going to create additional datum planes to place sketches on. And offset each sketch by a set amount. So the first one we're going to offset 50 millimeters. Then I'll create a second one at 85 millimeters. and a third one at 120 millimetres. So with that done, we can turn off the origin. And if we fit the view, we can see we've got three additional datums. So we'll go ahead and save at this point. And then we can start looking at how we're going to create these sketches. Um, so because we're replicating the original sketch, what we can do at this point is copy it. So I'm going to right click on it in the tree and select the copy option. I'm going to unselect the XY plane and click OK. And I'm going to paste the additional sketches into the model. One for each of the datum planes. I can select all three sketches by left clicking on the first one, holding shift and left click on the last one and I can drag and drop those into the body. So you can see they've just shifted over slightly there, indicating they're actually part of our body. So with the sketches created, we now need to assign them to each of our datum planes. And to do that, we first select the datum by left clicking on it in the 3D view and then we can use the map to face tool. 
So what this lets us do is select the sketch we want to map to the currently selected data. Click OK. And we'll go with the suggested flat face attachment method. I now go ahead and do that for each of the remaining sketches. And with that done, I'm going to save. I no longer need to see the datum plane, so I can turn them off by left clicking them on in the hierarchy and pressing the space bar. Then we'll go to the isometric view and fit. With the sketches now created, we can use the loft tool to convert them to 3D geometry. So to do that, I'm going to select the loft tool and I'm going to select the first sketch I want to start from, which is our original sketch. I'm going to select OK. At this point, nothing's actually happened in a 3D view because you need a minimum of two sketches to um, create a loft. So the next one is I'm going to add a section. I'll select the second sketch and continue with the other two. Select OK and save. At this point, the vase doesn't look particularly interesting, but we can go back through the sketches and start changing some of the dimensions. So I'm going to edit sketch one by double clicking on it. Then I'm going to double click on the dimension. I'm going to change the radius to 45 millimeters. And close. And then change sketch three to 45 millimeters. And with the vase shape created, we can now start to detail the design. So I'm going to detail mine by selecting the three edges and adding quite a big radius of five millimeters. Select OK to accept and save. The next step is to add the hole in the top of the vase. So to do that, I'm going to select the top face and then select the thickness tool. I'm then going to change the thickness parameters to make the thickness go inwards and change the wall thickness to two millimeters and click OK to accept. So with the vase created, we can now go ahead and add the twisted part of the vase. Um, so to do that, we're going to step through each of the sketches again and add a rotation to the sketch. So if we select the sketch one, the rotation of the sketch is currently fixed by the horizontal constraint on the bottom edge. So before we can change anything, we need to get rid of that. So I'm going to select it from the list. We'll notice it's turned green. I'm going to press delete. I'm then going to select the left edge and apply an angular constraint with a value of 15 degrees. Close the sketch and save. I will then select sketch two. I follow the same process, remove the current constraint Add an angular constraint with a value of 30. Close the sketch. And then finally, edit sketch 3. Adding an angular constraint of 45 degrees. Close the sketch. Then switch to the isometric view and fit. As a final step for this model, I'm going to head and add a couple of final details to make it a bit more polished. So I'm going to select one of the top edges, add a chamfer. I'm going to leave the default value at one millimeter, but then also select the bottom edge by clicking add ref, choosing the bottom edge, 
and clicking OK to accept. Going to choose the front view to have a look at it. Fit. And then go ahead and do a final save. And there we have it, a twisted vase. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. If there's anything you'd like to see in the future, anything you're struggling with, drop me a comment below and I'll have a look. Thanks for watching.